In the last part, given the proof obligation of invariant preservation, we learned about how you can systematically generate sequence based on how many events and how many invariant conditions you have in order to claim that your model is correct. Of course, before you can do that, you must discharge or prove all the sequence. Each sequence should be proved as a theorem. That's uh, our goal. And in this part, we'll start talking about the tool, the formal proof system for you to actually prove a given sequence. And it's called inference rule. Okay, inference rule over here. And in this part, we'll just talk about the syntax and also this formal meaning for uh, an inference rule. Uh, it can be easily confused with what a sequence looks like because their meaning in some way is very consistent. So you might find them too similar to be confused. But that's something I'll let it clarify as well. It's not too bad. First of all, let's start with the syntax. So we said this is an inference rule, or sometimes I simply say IR, you know, in the writing. But inference rule, that's why you should know. And this will be the form uh, or the syntax of the inference rule. So let's now talk about the syntax over here. Okay. So for the syntax here, I say A over here. So that's on the top. Oh, by the way, so we have some horizontal line. You want to distinguish between, in the case of sequence, it will be a turnstile. So syntactically, they're different, although they look similar. On the top, we got A over here. So this is so-called antecedents. Okay. Antecedents. And there is a reason why I put S for plural over here. Usually, they would be, well, in general, they could be a set of sequence. Right, so here you want to highlight the fact that, number one, it can be simply a set, meaning that it might be empty or maybe multiple, right? And also, it's going to be sequence over here, right? Not just a predicate. It's going to be a secret, right? Because we're we're now trying to use the inference rule to really manipulate sequence. So everything has to be in terms of the sequence. And what about the button there? So button there, C, is so called a consequence. And notice that I'm spelling this word as singular over here, right? You can see there's no S afterwards, right? There's a reason for that. So it's only a single sequence. Only a single sequence. And I'll give you example a little bit later. Okay, let's now just talk about the syntax and also semantics and maybe do a little bit of clarification between the inference rule versus a sequence and then we'll give you example. So we uh, so it's only a single sequence over here, All right? So that's about the uh, uh, the difference between what's really on the top being a set of sequence and also at the bottom, which will be only a single sequence. And what about the L over here? It's simply just a label, right? Remember when we talk about proof obligation rule, when we gave it, we also had I need to give a label. For example, you can see here. Yeah, so this was our invariant preservation rule for proof of obligation, right? So you can see the IMV over here is basically the name label, similar idea, right? So now for the inference rule, if you want to manipulate your sequence in a particular way, you have to quote which label or which name of the uh, inference rule you're using. So just L over here. I'm gonna give you an example. Of course, we got different names for different inference rules, right? So here, let me just also annotate over here. It's really important to know which uh, what rules we have. L will be just the label the label name or name label, doesn't matter, label name of the inference rule. All right, so that's about a syntax. It's uh, not too bad, but it's somehow very similar to the sequence uh, concept over here. So I would like to clarify syntactically and semantically. Let's now talk about the syntax, uh, revisit the syntax for a sequence. Okay, let's now talk about it quickly. All right, so in the case of sequence, if you recall how to write it, we have H on the top and turnstile and also G at the bottom, right? So this is how we write a sequence as we discussed in detail earlier. So this is what a sequence is like, right? Let's now review very quickly about the different components for sequence. And for the H, it's going to be, uh, it's actually called the uh, hypothesis. And for the G over here, it's called a go. And 
and both of them can just be a set of predicates, right? This can be a set of predicates, and this can also be a set of predicates. Sets of predicates. And we said before the formal meaning for the sequence, it would be a theorem if and only if you'll be equivalent to that H implies G, right? So that's the uh, the formal meaning that, uh, that we spoke about. Given that H is actually true, in that case, uh, G should be provable, right, uh, for the goal. That's about the syntax. And I would like to, uh, just to clarify that, syntac syntactically speaking, if you compare A over here versus H over here, right? So these two, these two are not the same, all right? You want to really uh, emphasize the points over here. You can see for H over here, it's really a set of predicates. And remember I said before, the sequence cannot be nested, right? It's just a predicates. And in the case of uh, A over here, it's a set of sequence over here, right? That is so that's something you will see. But you can think about, in some way, the uh, syntax for inference rule really contains, at the first level, just a set of sequence. And each secret uh, itself also contains a set of predicates. It's like a nested structure. If you look at the inference rule, that's something we'll see, right? I, mean, I, watch, I just, want, uh, just want to point it out first. And in a very similar way, if you look at a go over here, right? If you uh, try to look at side by side, if you look at a go in the case of the sequence and also the consequent in the case of the uh, inference rule, the same uh, difference should be drawn over here. So in the case of a uh, consequent, for example, it's going to be a, a, a single sequence over here. So it definitely got the syntax over here, right? On the other hand, if you talk about the go over here, in the case of the uh, sequence, it's also going to be a set of predicates, meaning that it cannot nest like a sequent, uh, the turnstile operator, right? So that's a very important syntactic different uh, syntactical differences you have to make between these two constructs. They are related, but not, but they are not the same. All right, but their meanings are rather consistent, which I'll show to you when I talk about the semantics. Okay, let's now go over some bullet points in the slides, and then I'll talk about the semantics quickly, and then we'll walk over some example. So formally, okay, it's already uh, giving you the meaning. So A implies C is an axiom. Meaning that we are saying that the rule itself is something that you can use to really manipulate the uh, sequence. So if you got a rule like uh, having antecedents and also consequent over here, you're basically saying in order for me to uh, prove C, it would be sufficient uh, to prove A itself is actually an axiom. In order for me to prove C, it would be sufficient to prove A. Right? So in that case, uh, the entire implication over here is an axiom. That's what we are saying formally. Okay. What about informally? I got two possible phrases for you. You can choose each, uh, whichever one that's more intuitive to you. Informally, in order for me to prove the sequent C over here, it would be sufficient for me to prove the set of sequence A over here. Right? That's the one way to look at it. And the second way is, if C is the case, that means we are assuming that A is the case. Well, you can simply say C is the case as long as we can prove that A is the case, right? So these are the informal meanings. But formally, we are really saying A implies C is an axiom or it's uh, something you can simply use as a rule without proving the rule itself. But of course, if you want to prove it, you can still do it because A itself is basically a, a set of sequence which would be, which would be just a set of uh, imprecations. And C over here is just a single sequence, which will also be, uh, well, also be a single imprecation. And the horizontal line over here is just uh, another imprecation. So if you really want to prove the inference rule, you can just uh, prove that some nested imprecation is uh, is a theorem. That's something I can show to you uh, just a little bit uh, when I give you some example rule. We can get there, okay? But normally you don't really need to prove the inference rule unless you're asked to, okay? Right, so we talk about the different syntactic components over here. Just make sure you go over them and make sure you understand uh, the, the difference, uh, the connection between inference rule and also sequence, right? 
And I'll get to the example rules in just one moment, right? Let me now go back to the semantics over here, right? For the semantics, uh, very quickly, it's going to be basically an imprecation. And then we're going to put antecedents over here. And also we're going to put C over here, right? However, let me emphasize once more. You have to always remember the C itself over here is a single sequence. And the A over here, the antecedents is a set of sequence. And also to remember that for each sequence that we talk about, like this one over here, it its formal meaning is simply just another imprecation. So you can think about the formal meaning for uh, an inference rule is simply an imprecation of imprecations. Okay, that's something I I want to uh, write it out explicitly for you. Think of an inference rule is stating that an imprecation whose antecedents and consequence are both sets of predicates and that imprecation is a theorem or is an axiom. An axiom ready to use. All right, let me just uh, highlight what, what I really want to say over here. What we're saying that what we're saying is in inference rule, like the one over here, is stating that an imprecation whose antecedents and consequence are both sets of predicates, and that this particular imprecation is in the axiom that's ready for use. So if you look at this one over here, it is an imprecation corresponding to the middle line over here. And then both the antecedents and also consequence over here, they are both sets of predicates itself, A itself and also C itself would just be actually uh, uh, imprecations. So there'll be a nested uh, imprecations over there. And we are claiming that the entire imprecation is simply an axiom for us to use. So that's something you want to keep in mind. Okay? And a very easy question over here, very similar to what we posed to you uh, in the case of the sequence syntax and semantics. What does it really mean when the antecedents over here is simply just empty, right? Because remember we said it can be uh, just a set of sequence, meaning that it can be empty, right? What does it really mean? So syntactically, this is how you write it. Syntactically, you might just say, I got a vertical, I got a horizontal bar, maybe some label over here, but uh, I only got a consequence over here. And you can see the top components over here is simply just missing, right? So what does it really mean? So that really means it will be as if you actually got this part over here simply just already true, meaning that you don't really need to, uh, in order to prove this, you don't really need to prove anything else because this uh, this consequence itself is already automatically an, a theorem, okay? That's what it is saying. Two prove the consequence C, nothing else to proof, okay? That's what it really means because uh, it's uh, C is automatically true according to the goal. All right, so, so far we are still talking about just abstractly about the syntax and semantics. Let's now talk about some concrete example. I have two examples for you. Okay, and these are the uh, inference rule that we're gonna list in our example uh, in our example inference rule for this week. We're, we're gonna introduce you to uh, more uh, inference rules as we go. Okay, the first one here. Let's now talk about it. Okay, so I'm going to have a 
horizontal line over here. Yeah, I'm going to put something on the top, something at the bottom, right? And for this one here, let me say the name. It's called N-O-N, standing for monotonicity. Right, you may have heard about this term before over here. Okay, let's see exactly what it means. Okay, in order for me to prove the following, and I'm going to put in a go over here some sequence, right? It's going to be a single sequence according to the syntax of inference rule, right? It's going to be a single sequence. So let's say the sequence itself is, okay, G should be provable under the hypothesis H1 and also H2. Right? You can think about whenever you put comma over here, it will be as if we put conjunction. Okay, So the comma over here is really conjunction over here. Meaning that assuming H1 and H2 being the hypothesis, we will be able to prove uh, the goal G. Right? That's, uh, that's the, uh, uh, the, the sequence that we, uh, uh, that, that's the sequence that, uh, that will act as the uh, consequence in the inference rule. And what about the top, right? We're saying that in order to prove that this particular sequence is actually a, a theorem, it will be sufficient to prove the following. It will be sufficient to prove that G is provable under only one hypothesis, H1, right? Let me read it to you again, right? You can see here, this is an inference rule, right? Don't really get confused. This is an inference rule. Inference rule number one. Okay. And for the inference rule, the top is a set of predicates. In this case, it's a singleton set, only one uh, sequence in the set. And the button over here is the consequence, which would be just a single sequence, okay, not predicate. And we are saying that in order for you to prove that this sequence over here is a theorem, it would be sufficient to prove that this sequence over here is a theorem, right? In order to prove that the the consequent is a theorem, it would be sufficient to prove that the antecedents is a theorem, right? And now let me go a little bit further. If you actually think about uh, what's going on over here, what's the formal meaning for this? Okay, let me just go a little bit further to what I really meant by nested imprecation, right? Which I mentioned before. Okay, let me now. Go, go there. If you look at this particular part over here, okay, this part here, the formal meaning is, according to what we said about sequence, right, it's uh, the hypothesis implies go. H1 and H2 implies G, right? That's what this means. And what about the antecedents over here? This part here means H1 implies G, right? You can see these two. This is the formal meaning for the sequence that's uh, that serve as the antecedent for the inference rule. And similarly, this is the formal meaning for the sequence that serve as the consequent of the inference rule. And what's really missing here, we want to also bring this horizontal line, which is an imprecation sign, into context. So we can figure out the, the complete meaning for the entire inference rule. Let's do that. Inference rule number one. So now, as I said before, it's going to be a nested uh, imprecation, right? Let's take a look. So this will be, so there are two ways to read it. The first way, if you're able to prove the antecedents, which is H1 implies G, that means you have already proved the consequence, which is H1 and H2 implies G, right? You can see this is exactly the nested implication that I was talking about. The antecedents of the inference rule is a set of sequence itself is an implication. The consequence of the inference rule is also a set of, uh, is only a single sequence, which itself is an implication formally. And the horizontal line over here is saying that in order to prove the consequence, it would be sufficient to prove the antecedents, right? So you really want to work out the uh, meaning yourself to really see why everything will simply boil down into 
uh, nested imprecations. That's really what we're proving. So we, we're still really deal dealing with predicates. It's just that you have to know at different levels, we're talking about different things. At the level of the, sorry, at the level of the sequence, we talk about predicates implies predicates. But in the case of the uh, inference rule, we talk about sequence implies sequence, right? That's something you want to really make sure you uh, feel comfortable, all right? All right, so this is the uh, the first uh, example I would like to talk about. Let me just highlight it, right? That's a f ultimate uh, formal meaning for this particular inference rule. Of course, we may not be able to do such exercise for every example, but make sure you understand it. And then for any other sequence with a similar structure, you can definitely interpret uh, in the same way. All right, let me give you example number two. Example number two, it's a slightly different flavor. In some ways, easier to understand. Okay, in some way. And that's really corresponding to question over here. Okay, let me write it down, okay? And we still have just a horizontal line over here, right? We're gonna put antecedents on the top and consequence at the bottom. And this, the name is called P2. And it's uh, part of the piano uh, uh, natural number uh, axioms. That's something we'll actually go over the other axiom uh, in, that, in, that, uh, in that series uh, later. Okay, so this one here, uh, we are saying that in order to prove the following, so we're gonna put the consequence as a theorem, meaning that assuming that n is a natural number, it is the case that n plus one is also a natural number. What you can think about n plus one being a natural number is provable under the assumption that n is a natural number, right? That's how you interpret the sequence, right? Don't forget. And here, that's it. We don't have any antecedents, uh, we don't have any antecedents for this in uh, inference rule, meaning that it would be as if this part here is simply just true. But what does that, what does that really mean overall? Think about the uh, meaning again. If you look at the consequence over here, what's its uh, formal meaning? We know that its formal meaning follow the sequence rule, which will be, the goal, n plus one is a natural number is provable given the assumption that n is a natural number, right? So that's the goal. And that's the formal meaning for the consequence being a sequence over here. And at the top, we simply don't have anything, which would be uh, as if that's true. So what would be the entire meaning if we bring the horizontal line again into context? Let's talk about it. So inference rule number two, that's the our example number two, right? So let me just be consistent. So what will be its formal meaning? It will be basically to say, antecedent is simply no sequence. So it will be as if true, meaning that you don't need to prove anything else. True is automatically proved. So true, and then implies over here, and you can see here is the predicates for the sequence that serve as the consequence, which will be, and a natural number, assuming that you will be able to prove that a n plus one is a natural number, okay? Like that, right? I can write slightly better. n plus one is a member of the natural number over here, right? So that's what we have, right? And how do you interpret this? If, if you say true implies something, it, it is equivalent to that consequence of the imprecation is automatically uh, a theorem, right? It would, be as, it would be equivalent to this one here being true. So we're basically saying, and a natural number implies n plus one, a natural number. So that's really what we meant over here. So if you compare this inference rule versus this inference rule, this one has some antecedents, meaning that in order to prove this, you will have to prove this. In order to prove this, it would be sufficient if you try to prove this, but you got some work to do. On the other hand, in order to prove this, you only need to prove true, which has no, uh, which uh, requires no work, meaning that this is automatically an axiom for you to use, right? So this means this is automatically an axiom. This part over here is automatically an axiom, which means you don't need to prove anymore. 
uh, prove any further. Uh, it's just, you can simply use it as given. Already, so that's about the uh, syntax and semantics for inference rule. I also try to do some detailed comparison with the sequence and see how they are related and how they can, can be uh, combined together. It's really important for you to see that. Don't really get confused about the similar syntax they have. I think that they have been designed that way just to show how closely related they are. Right, so these are the two inference rules I spoke about and we're gonna see how we can use them when we do the proofs. All right, so these are just the uh, written form of what I just explained. All right, so let's now go on to talk about, let's say given the sequence, given some inference rule that are relevant, how can we conduct the proof? Let's now talk about it. 